What's going on, family? Demandre Douglas here. It's a beautiful Monday, July something. Um, I'm going to start this off by saying I am not perfect. I repent for my sin. And I don't judge anyone for their sin because we're all at different places in our journey. I am just here to tell my story. I am not a um, pastor. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Of course, the Most High God of Israel. So I am not bound by any of, I'm not bound by anything but the Bible. Okay. If I do something that's not in the Word of God, check me. Okay. A wise man will accept rebuke, and he will become wiser. So with all that being said, family, I had some of the weirdest shit happened to me um again not perfect working on the cursing working on the smoking working on the red bulls okay however i am alcohol and drug free i am fornication free i am free of most sin not that any sin carries more weight than the others however i am free Mentally, spiritually, physically, and financially. Family, I went to North Druid Hills, a nice area, and I go to, if you watch my stories, I love Panera Bread, I love Starbucks, I love coffee. So I'm sitting at the bus stop, I am waiting on, I am waiting on the bus. Uh, no. I'm waiting on the bus, and as I'm waiting on the bus, a gentleman comes to the bus stop, and he is a young guy, he's light-skinned, kind of looked like Drake, but he had like really, really brown eyes, just trying to paint the image, paint the picture, and he like forced a conversation with me, I have these headphones on. I'm listening to like narc videos or whatever. And he asked me for a cigarette. So I gave him a cigarette. I put the headphones back on. Then he gets my attention again. And he asked me like some random dumb question. I answered the question. So, hold on, wait for this train. My apologies. Um, I promised there was no trains and helicopters before I started recording. But you know how that goes. That's how you know I'm saying some real ish. So, let me resume. Okay, so I'm at the bus stop with this guy. I'm minding my own business. I'm really trying to keep my energy to myself, family. Like, I have so much energy. I feel so good that I really don't. I just notice that when I talk to certain people, especially if they can get me, like, really engaged in the conversation, and a lot of times the conversation will be like degrading or demeaning someone, something. It's like they'll get me angry about the situation. Um, example, Kim came out and she's like, I want the old Kanye back, la la la. And I'm, that really upsets me because I watched you destroy this man. Like I watched this man beg you for like a year to fix your marriage and you were not having it. You wanted that white guy with all the tattoos, and that's fine. But now that the man has gotten remarried, now you're on TV crying like, oh, Kanye, I want the old Kanye. Why would you want the old anyone back? Everybody's evolving. Anywho, no one around me. So we're waiting at the bus stop, and the bus driver almost drives past us. And the guy stands up and flags the bus down. And... When the bus driver noticed it and he pulls over, excuse me, the guy is like, man, bro, this punk ass bus driver, he was about to leave us. He was about to la la la. He's trying to get me to like be angry with him and talk shit with him about the bus and the bus driver. However, I am just thankful that the bus came. It's hot as hell outside. It was like almost a hundred degrees. I don't care that he almost passed me. I'm happy it showed up and I'm happy he stopped. 
we get on the bus. I sit in the back of the bus and he sits close to me. He tries to start another conversation about the bus driver. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I'll put my headphones back on. Because every time he talks to me, I have to be like, and then I, when I put it back on, in my mind, that's an indicator that I'm not trying to talk. So we get to the train station and he's trying to talk to me again. Keep in mind, family, I don't know this man from a can of paint and I have trust issues with people because of my narc situations. Like I don't trust no one unless you have the Holy Spirit in you. Like I just keep it professional, keep it business and I keep it moving. So we go downstairs and I walk to the opposite end. He walks to the right, I walk to the left. I'm waiting on the train. People are staring at me, you know, you know, they just do that. And I get on my train car. I sit down. I'm I'm just chilling, family. The train starts moving and this man comes through. Anyone who's rode the train, you know, on the inside in the middle of the train, they have the train doors and you can like hop from train car to train car. I mean, this man comes onto my train car. Keep in mind, the train is moving. He comes onto my train car and sits directly across from me. And I'm like, oh my God, like, what does this man want from me? Like, why is he following me? Why is he trying to, like, force a friendship with me? I don't know you, family. You a grown-ass man. I'm a grown-ass man. You don't have no business you offering me. You're not selling me anything. I'm not selling you anything. What is your purpose? What is your function? What do you want? Okay? And I'm not trying to be rude. I don't look to demean or put anyone down. I'm not trying to be rude. So, hey. I'm like, what's up, family? He like, you see the dude right there? He's dang, he smelled like piss. I didn't even notice this man. Like, I had not paid two shits to the man. No attention. So I look back, and the man is severely demon-possessed right now. Like, his demons are like, I don't know. His, his energy was so thick. It was so dark that you could tell, like, oh, my God. I'm... And so I started praying for the man. Family, this man started banging on the windows of the train. He started stumping, he started growling. He started like, family, he was acting like a wild animal that was like in pain or something. And so I'm praying for the man and I'm asking Jesus, I'm asking the angels to do X, Y, and Z. And the guy is now he's scared. Now he's scared. I look over, I look up. I'm really looking back at the man who I'm praying over. And the guy that even told me, made me aware of this man, is just looking like, just looking like, what the hell is going on? And everyone else on the train are scared, family. They are scared. Every time the train stops, people are getting off the train and getting on another train car. I could see them through that same door that we were talking about. Family, I, when I tell you the authority that you have as a chosen one to like snatch a demonic being out of the human vessel is like otherworldly it is if you are a child of god it's amazing to see if you are not you're gonna be scared shitless because your demons are gonna be like please don't let this man put his attention on me 
and the family. Now the guy don't want to say anything to me. <laughs> now the same guy was following me and trying to befriend me, trying to get my attention. I don't want no weed, family. I'm sober. I don't want no alcohol. And that's how I knew he was sent by the enemy. I'm like, the enemy sent you here. I, I'm assuming because... You are a good-looking, fit young guy. The guy looked like he could have been on a magazine or something. He looked like he could have been a male model. Uh, I mean, that means shit to me. Like, you don't have a vagina. You're not selling anything. There is no reason for me to give you my attention. Family. By the time... Oh, so the man got up and got off the train car. The man I was praying over. And it was like whatever in him was trying to fight back. But after like five minutes of prayer, like I didn't end up casting all of the demons out of him. But I did end up doing enough damage to the point where he didn't want to fight no more. Like I took the fight out of his body and he just wanted to get the hell on. I really started to follow him and finish the job but my spirit said just be cool it's all right because i really only want to help you if you want help i mean if you want to be demon possessed and you enjoy your demons family good for you like that's your free will the only reason i did it is because i i could just tell the man so was trapped he was so low that I don't think he could reach out if he wanted to. That's how low this man was. So now everybody's scared of me. And I feel bad because I would never want people to be scared of me. I just I just want respect. I want the same respect that you want. There it is. But look, family, I promise you. I promise you. I promise you. I promise you. I thought... Real talk. I thought I was crazy because... Whenever I went somewhere and I would start recording or I would start praying for an area, a helicopter would like magically show up, family. And I just was thinking it was a coincidence. I went to a quote unquote remote area like outside of the city one day and started praying and a helicopter showed up and I knew family I knew at that moment I was like family they are watching me there is nothing here there is no one here there is no air base there is no hospital there is no reason for this helicopter to be present another example was I was in my home um, I stayed on the top floor and one day I was uh, I was praying on the, for the people on TV. I was praying for the people on TV. I was watching a live broadcast. I was watching the news. I was watching the news. And this news anchor, she's like mad gorgeous, but she's like a witch. And I can see it. You, The eyes are the windows to the soul. So I could see that she just had this really, really thick Jezebel spirit. And so I didn't like, I wasn't praying warfare. I was praying protection over her because I know how the kingdom of darkness operates. They eat their own family. They eat their own. If you are a part of that kingdom and someone else comes around you and they want your energy and, and they believe they can take it, they're going to do so. There is no honor amongst thieves. So as I'm doing this family, I have my blinds up, I have my windows open, and a helicopter shows up. And the helicopter is this screen, this is my window. And so the helicopter is like this, and it's looking, and I can see the helicopter through my window. And I was questioning whether or not the helicopter was looking at me. So I... I was like, let me move. So I moved to my other window and I started laughing. I was like, 
ha 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 motherfucker you can't you can't see me but family like a few seconds later the helicopter came and moved to the other side and is now looking at me through my other window and it's facing me and it's close enough that I can see the silhouettes of the pilots and I can see the big ass camera at the bottom of the front of it and I, I'm a cameraman I know these cameras they are very good family they can you've seen the news when they're following a car crash you know they can zoom in quite far and family I just put my head down I was just like family it's like Satan has to watch me like he has to watch me he has to watch me and it blows my mind and I'm sure if you are chosen, you experience the same thing. It's like the world has to know what I'm doing. If I don't post on social media, if I disappear for like three days, I don't say anything to anyone, people will start calling me, they will start writing me on social media, and they will ask me what I'm doing. And it's weird to me because it's like, it's like family. You don't ever talk to me. You don't ever just say, hey, how you doing? And so for you to just decide to ask me what I'm doing, it's awkward to me. And then there's a pause in my mind and then I'm like, oh, this is your agent and you trying to figure out what I got going on and what I'm doing. And I don't know why, because I don't be doing shit. I don't be doing shit, family. I'm just like a normal person. I just worship God. That is like the only difference. I like, that's it. Like, that's all I do. I get wait, money, I wait. read my Bible. Wait to cross Grant's street. That, that is it, family. I don't know what he'd be expecting. Grants. It's like... I don't know, bro. It's like Satan knows I'm weapon. And it's almost like he's just afraid. And he's trying to figure out when God's going to activate me. That's, that's the best analogy I've got. Anyway, family. I don't want to ramble on. I just wanted to tell you guys that if you encounter an individual and this individual is trying to pretty much force a friendship on you, you need to be wary of this individual family. Right? You need to have your eyes open. Do not fall for it because this it's just an agent. And if you allow them into your life, they're going to sabotage you, family. Wow. Anyway, I love y'all. Be careful. Keep your eyes open. Stay prayed up. Keep your armor on. And they can't touch you unless you allow them to. Okay? Be blessed.